This is Black History Month, so I would uh, uh, want to talk to you about uh, some of the other uh, uh, first black athletes at other schools in the SEC. Today, I want to talk about uh, Wendell Hudson, who was the first uh, black athlete at uh, on scholarship at the University of Alabama. I want to talk to him for a couple of reasons. One, on Wednesday night, Alabama plays at Auburn, and two, more, much more importantly, is on Saturday back in Tuscaloosa, Wendell Hudson's uh, number 20 will be retired uh, by the University of Alabama, and he will be the first uh, athlete, football, basketball, any sport, to ever have his his number retired at Alabama, and they couldn't get anyone that is more um, uh, uh, deserving of the of the honor. Uh, what uh, Wendell did back when he entered in 1969 and and, and 70 academic year, he 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 uh, changed the face of Alabama athletics. You could say that. Well, Pretty much all of what goes on in the Alabama Athletic Department goes through uh, Wendell Hudson. He was the start. All the first round draft choices, the national championships, have been won in recent years. Uh, he was the start. He had the courage to come. He not only did uh, uh, something tremendous for black Americans living in Alabama and elsewhere, but he also did something for the University of Alabama. Alabama needed him. It was a time they were having difficulty recruiting black athletes because of the, the history of uh, during the segregation period of, the, of it, the integration of the university being blocked. And uh, only the year before they had gone after uh, so Coach C.M. Newton, the basketball coach, uh, had got arrived in 1968 at the end of the season. To, uh, he he uh, tried to recruit Henry Harris and Bud Stallworth, both blue chip athletes. Harris, uh, they, they had great difficulty even getting him to come to make a, a visit to uh, Tuscaloosa, and he was, that was, he lived within 40 miles away, and Bud Stallworth, um, he, they got him to come, the president talked to his parents, and he, and, and, uh, and, but when he went to the ball game, his parents, you know, he had uh, state troopers all around him, which was great that he was being protected, but he didn't think that would be much of a way to spend the next four years having to worry about his personal safety and what was going on. So he went to the University of Kansas and became uh, an All-American. Um, so Wendell Hudson grew up in Birmingham in an area of the inner city called very near Dynamite Hill where bombings occurred regularly. Um, he lived so close to the 16th Avenue Baptist Church that he could feel the uh, uh, sh the shock effect of the bomb that went off in, in 1963 that killed the uh, uh, four uh, young girls there. Uh, when he enrolled, uh, the, when he enrolled in Parker High School, one of his teachers would be the mother of uh, one of those four girls. And uh, Parker, of course, uh, would be the uh, primary source of uh, the participants in the children's, Dr. King's Children's March in Birmingham that involved the, the fire hoses and the dogs. So Wendell had grown up all with the civil rights movement all around him. He was uh, a, a starter on the Parker High School basketball team that in 1969 won Alabama's first integrated state basketball tournament. Uh, but he was not the top star, probably the least of the five starters. And uh, it looked like he was headed to a junior college or uh, historically black colleges. Uh, Auburn assistant coach Rudy Davalos felt that uh, he was too skinny. He was six foot six. He felt he was too skinny to play in the SEC. But there was something that C.M. Newton liked about him. 
Uh, he had top 10% of his class academically, and uh, they, he was concerned that he needed to sign, sign a, a blue chip athlete to, to be the first at Alabama, but uh, because he didn't want him to fail athletically. But he eventually, about a month after signing date, uh, Newton went with his his gut feeling and and signed uh, Wendell Hudson. That day, his mother cried. Hudson's mother was crying not for joy, but for the opportunity Wendell was getting, but because she feared for his life. Um, and they got hate mail, not only from white fans that didn't want uh, uh, Alabama to integrate athletics, but also from from blacks because who accused Hudson of being a sellout uh, to go to Alabama. That's the way things were there then. But Wendell stuck by his decision. He said he really didn't get anxious until he started packing. And then he realized that he was going from living all his life in a, a, a black neighborhood, all black neighborhood, to living in a, a dormitory, athletic dormitory with 160, 170 white males in it, most of them football players. When he rolled in there uh, that uh, late summer of 1969, uh, the football team was out at practice. So he got settled into his dorm room, uh, no problems, it was quiet. Uh, then when he went to dinner in the cafeteria there in Bryan Hall, he, uh, you know, the football players were back from practice. And so there was all sorts of night noise, plates clanging. and he just went and got in line. But by the time he got up to where he was going around a corner to, to get his food, all the noise stopped. Silent. You know, blacks and white and eat, whites eating together, of course, was one of the big taboos of the Jim Crow segregation area era. When he rounded the corner, though, where he got his tray and could see uh, the serving line, every person working in the serving line was a black American. And they were all smiling at him. He said that he got more food on that plate that day than he could have possibly eaten. Um... On campus, things were rough. Uh, he walked out of a, uh, took an F in one class rather than listen to the professor talk about the joys of the old South for both black, both races, black and white. He said every day he went on campus, he had a reason to quit. He had a reason to live, leave, but he didn't leave. After a while, he decided that he had done nothing wrong. The system was wrong. And he, he had as much right to be there on that campus than anybody. He said the type of opportunity that he was getting, people had died for. And he wasn't leaving. At some point there in the first week or so that uh, Wendell was at Alabama, uh, back then, the uh, coach Bryant tried to keep his players well fed and putting on some weight. Uh, and the cafeteria would open up every night at I don't know 9 o'clock, something like that. And and the players were made to 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 go down there and eat. And a lot of times it was just peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but it was and milk. But it was getting you know more uh, weight on them before they went to bed. And so, um, so Hudson's down there uh, one night and he hears somebody's uh, rough old voice say, um, can I join you? And, um, and Wendell looks up and he sees Mary Bryant. And so, you know, Wendell said, yeah, yeah. And so Bryant sat down. And Wendell and his Peter tried to wolf down, make small talk, he said, while he was trying to wolf down a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So the message, though, was real clear. Don't mess with Wendell. Everybody in there saw that, that 
he sat down with this first black athlete and that if he could do that except this black athlete then the rest of them better too um but that didn't really help wendell when he went on road with the freshman team you know all through the sec as uh, coach newton would later say he caught a lot of hell uh racism just hatred uh people's frustrations about integration they are all directed on this 18 year old kid threats and uh twice newton had to go newton had to go to the athletic director of the other school to get the uh fans directly behind his bench the alabama bench uh, away from there and these weren't just regular fans he went to the athletic director because they were the athletic director's football players that were that were causing you know that were were saying all this stuff did that twice and at Ole Miss oh Wendell said he fouled out in less than 10 minutes first time he, when he played there fouled out in less than oh, 10 minutes he said at some places it was just ridiculous but he stayed uh he sometime that first fall he called uh they had him call talk to Wilbur Jackson who was uh, they were trying to recruit for football who would of course go on and play in the NFL and Wendell told him that uh, things were rough I mean they were it was hard but he thought it was getting better so that enabled Wilbur Jackson to come and he was the Alabama's first black signee and he who enrolled in fall of 1970. Hudson presence enabled Newton to continue to sign black players um, and in turn coach Newton enabled Hudson to be a star which was a rarity among the first black athletes as one of them said we were there to break the fans in rarely were did they get to be live up to their potential athletically but Hudson did he got more confident as he went along by his junior year at six foot six he led the SEC in rebounding with 13 rebounds a game the following year he led in 1973 he led the uh, SEC in scoring and rebounding and was SEC player of the year the first black athlete to do that in uh, basketball or football uh, and the following season when he was gone Alabama started five black half of five black players on the basketball team and won the first of three consecutive SEC championships that was the kind of immediate impact he had his other impact his long-term impact is obvious when when coach Newton was inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame in Springfield Massachusetts in 19 in the year 2000 uh, he wanted Wendell Hudson to be there uh, so to get him in they limit you having only so many guests he listed Wendell as family and coach newton said he figured that there uh that if he was as close wendell was as close to family as he could get he said that if wendell had failed then he would have failed and he would have been back in transylvania college in kentucky coaching but wendell didn't fail and when saturday comes and he raises his and his number 20 is up there at the ceiling of in the rafters of uh, at Tuscaloosa then appropriately he will be part of the Alabama family forever <laughs>